So in this series of videos, I want to go over material from section 4.3, which is about determining statistical significance. So in chapter 4, we're looking at hypothesis testing. So let's look at a quick review question. Suppose we have a randomization dot plot for a null hypothesis that p equals 0.5. So here's the null down here, h naught is p equals 0.5. The alternative is that uh, p, the proportion, is less than 0.5. The observed sample proportion is p hat equals 0.35. Based on the randomization distribution above, what do you think the p-value should be? So throughout these slides, there'll be questions like these. I would suggest you uh, pause your video and try to answer the question, and then unpause it as we go through each of these questions. So on this uh, dot plot, p hat is 0.35, which is right here. So there are uh, a thousand um, samples, bootstrap samples on this plot. There's at least one right here that is more extreme than 0.35. So p hat, or sorry, the p value is going to be the proportion in the extremes, which is a less than. So we're looking at a left tail. So this is about one in a thousand. So your p is going to be about 0.001. All right, looking at another distribution. Now we're assuming the null hypothesis is that correlation, that's that character rho, correlation is zero. So we're assuming no correlation right here. And the alternative that there's some positive correlation between two variables. Which sample statistics shows the most evidence for the alternative hypothesis? All right, the alternative hypothesis is that um, rho is positive. So the sample statistics that has the most evidence is going to be positive and in some sense the most positive. So it'll be this 0.5. And if you look over here, 0.5 is right around here on the dot plot, I'm circling. So this p value is going to be uh, the most evidence would be the smallest. So 0.5 and 0 0.005 would be the most evidence for the alternative hypothesis. All right, so in general, the smaller the p-value, the stronger the evidence against the null, or is it the stronger the evidence for the null? It's the stronger the evidence against the null. If the p-value is low, the null must go. If the p-value is low, then it would be very rare to get results as extreme as those observed if the null hypothesis were true. So a low p-value suggests or provides evidence that the null hypothesis is false or probably not true. The p-value is small, then a statistic as extreme as that observed. So imagine we have a sample statistic that is given. We have that from a good sample. If the p-value is small, then the sample that we have would be unlikely if the null hypothesis were true, providing significant evidence against the null hypothesis. The smaller the p-value, the stronger the evidence against the null hypothesis and in favor of the alternative. The smaller the p-value, the stronger the case against the null hypothesis. Don't forget, smaller p-value, the stronger the evidence against the null. Or I like to think about this, if the p-value is low, the null must go. All right, which of the following p-values gives the strongest evidence against the null hypothesis? That would be the smallest p-value, 0.005. Again, keep in mind p-value is a probability. So p-value is always going to be between 0 and 1. So these are all possible p-values. But the smallest one, the one closest to 0, is the strongest evidence against the null. Which of the following p-values gives the strongest evidence for the alternative hypothesis? It's going to be roughly the same idea here. It's the smallest value. In this case, it's 0.033%. The lower the p-value, the stronger the evidence against the null. And that is the same thing as saying the stronger the evidence in favor of the alternative. All right, I'm going to go over scenario. Question one of the day, does red wine, which includes resveterol, promote weight loss? And if so, why? All right. 
Resveratrol, an ingredient in red wine and grapes, has been shown to promote weight loss in rodents. We're going to look at a study pretty soon on lemurs, primate. A sample of lemurs had various, excuse me, sample of lemurs had various measurements taken before and after receiving uh, resveratrol supplementation for four weeks. Feel bad, the poor lemurs, they didn't even get to drink some delicious wine. They got a supplement. And after those four weeks, all the lemurs were tested for body mass, okay, before and after for body mass, resting metabolic rate locomotor activity, and their food intake. This is a study done in um, 2010. Can we use the study to make conclusions about causality? Can we say from the study that drinking wine causes the lemurs to lose weight? It's a little bit more uh, subtle. It's actually no. And if you said yes because it's an experiment, that was good thinking. It is an experiment but the treatment was not randomly assigned. All the lemurs got the uh, red wine supplement um, after they were tested. So in order to draw some conclusions about causation, causality, you have to do an experiment and there has to be some random assignment. So some lemurs would get the supplement, some would not. And that's not what happened in this experiment. So for the tests involving body mass and food intake, what are the relevant hypotheses? We're going to let B, uh, the subscript, represent before taking the supplement, and A for after the supplement. And we have four options down here. Again, I encourage you to uh, pause the video if you want to think about this. Write down what you think your answer should be. And it is D. Okay, again, more importantly, why is it D? One thing we're looking at body mass and food intake. So we're looking at averages. How much is their body mass and how much do they eat? So if it's a measurable quantity, then we're taking, talking about average, so it has to be one of these mu options. And if we're looking at body mass and food intake, the idea is does this red wine supplement uh, cause or have a correlation with losing weight? So we'd expect their body mass to be greater before. So the average should be greater before. That would be the alternative hypothesis. For the test involving metabolism and activity, what are the relevant hypotheses? And we're going to have the same set. We're looking at averages or means, and is there a decrease in metabolism and activity? All right, which of the following tests give the strongest evidence against the null hypothesis that, let's say, their body mass index, their weight is roughly the same? This case we want the strongest evidence is going to be the smallest p-value 0.007 so the smallest p-value so basically this evidence shows the body mass is most likely to actually have the change from the supplement so the formal hypothesis has two conclusions the p-value is small we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative the p-value is not small do not reject the null hypothesis and we're talking about later, well, how do we know what's small and not small? So if we look at uh, one more example, we have a randomization distribution for uh, correlation, assuming correlation is zero, no correlation between two variables. Based on the randomization, do you think we should reject the null? And here we're not given a p-value, but we're given a sample statistic, r is 0.6 have some sample of the two variables and the correlation between those two variables is a 0.6. So if we look at our distribution, imagine these are all the possible samples someone could take. The sample that we actually have is right here, 0.6. So the likelihood of getting the sample that we did is pretty low. It's only one in you know a thousand or so. So this would be good evidence that we should reject the null hypothesis. Again, I don't expect you to get this answer um, immediately, but just conceptually understand that sample results at the 0.6 or more extreme are very rare. So that's why we reject the null in this case. All right, so we have the same exact uh, hypothesis, assume zero correlation between two variables. The alternative is there's some positive correlation. But now we have a sample statistic of 0.1. 
different sample, say we have a totally different sample, we get 0.1. Based on the randomization distribution, do you think we should reject the null? So to answer this, I'm hoping you're looking at, well, where is 0.1 on the x-axis? 0.1 is right around here, halfway between 0 and 1. So I'm going to circle now. The p-value is the likelihood of getting this 0.1 right here or more extreme. So 0.1 or more extreme, this looks like it's, you know, 30% or so of the data of these samples have a 0.1 or greater. And it turns out, if we plot 0.1, it turns out to be 0.335. We'll go over later in a, a later video on how to actually get these numbers using Stacky. But for right now, we have a very high likelihood, you know, 33, 34% chance of getting sample data like this or more extreme. So we should not reject the null. Again, we're not going to say the null is correct, but this does not provide evidence against the null. This is likely to happen. And let's say we have the same situation. I'll assume that there's no correlation between two variables. And we have now a third sample of the two variables where the correlation is 0.336. So where does that lie on the x-axis? here or so. So if we plot 0.336, this ends up being about 5%. So not the 1%, but 5%. Should we reject the null? This is probably more something involving personal preference, maybe some human psychology. Usually right around 5% is where we don't know. So what do we do in cases like these where it's not very clear? And this, I think, is pretty clear. We do not reject. It's likely to happen. In the previous example, you know, that one out of a thousand, that's a pretty clear example we should reject. So what do we do in these uh, kind of um, gray area, middle of the road scenarios where it's not likely, but it does definitely happen? All right. So that's what I was talking about before. What do we mean by small? We're going to reject the null hypothesis if p-value is too small, and do not reject the null if it's not too small. But how small is too small? So we're going to bring in this idea called a significance level. Significance level, level alpha is the threshold below which the p-value is deemed small enough to reject the null. So p-value is low, reject the null, and that low means that p-value is less than alpha. So Greek letter alpha is the um, character, the variable we use for our significance level. If p-value is greater or equal to this alpha, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. So this alpha is essentially the cutoff line. All right, briefly want to talk about why is 0.05 used. 